Welcome, listeners, to episode three of the Department of Comics. I am Corey here with Aaron, and we are going to discuss two Star Wars comics um, today. Um, I can't believe we're on our third episode already. Uh, we've gotten some really, really great feedback from our listeners and from our members about the content that Aaron has been providing. Uh, and we uh, certainly love that people are getting a lot out of this and Aaron is just ridiculous and doing some phenomenal research and uh, breaking news on here that no one else is, is covering or talking about. So let's hit the ground running here. Aaron, today we're going to talk about Star Wars High Republic number two. Uh, I'm going to give you the floor. How about it? Yeah, so High Republic number two came out this past week along with High Republic Adventures number one. Um, those are the two big Star Wars books that came out. Uh, Star Wars number 11 also came out, um, but there's nothing huge keyworthy about that issue other than it's just a wonderful story. I, I read it. It's a great story. Charles Soule is doing an incredible job with that series. Um, so we're going to focus more on High Republic number two and High Republic Adventures number one. Um, starting things off, High Republic number two, we have the first appearance of Seret and Tarek. They are the, the Jedi Padawan twins. Well, I don't think they're Padawans anymore, but they are the Jedi twins who like share the same brain and finish these other sentences. Um, we also have the co-first appearance of the Nahil. Let's see here. They they are um we we only see one Nahil warrior in this issue. Um so it it's Kind of like a cameo appearance of the Nihil, but it is a first appearance of the Nihil. Um, we have the first appearance of Bernestra Rowe in comics. Um, she's notably one of the youngest Jedi Knights the Order has seen in a very long time. Um, she is going to be a main character of this era moving forward. Um, she has already been in the Light of the Jedi novel, Into the Dark novel, um, the A Test of Courage Kids novel, She's been in both of the Star Wars Insider short stories. So she's going to be a main character moving forward. We also have the first appearance of the Dringir. Um, Key Collector calls it the Dengar, which is not correct. Um, that is a bounty hunter, not a dark side plant thing from the High Republic era. It's called the Dringir. We also have that first appearance in High Republic number two. So what, uh, what are your thoughts from a resale perspective? Do um, you think that uh, these are going to be hot comics to pick up? So I, I do think they are going to be hot. They, they aren't very, quote unquote, hot right now because shops very heavily over ordered them because of how crazy High Republic number one went. So there was a ton of them out there. Some shops still aren't even sold out. However, we are starting to see them go up just a little bit, um, just a little bit. I've seen them rise about a dollar or so on eBay. It's getting there. And as the shops run out and people still want to try to get some, then that's going to make the price go up. As time goes on, the price is going to go up because even though these were very heavily ordered, it doesn't change the fact that they're very important key issues with a bunch of first appearances in them. So like the first one, I envision this whole world and this whole realm is going to be explored hopefully down the road by uh, Disney Plus or by uh, Marvel for movies and, and, and Disney Plus shows. Um, for people that are spacking on this, would you envision a lot of these High Republic, especially uh, the first and second issues to be sort of long-term holds for people? Um, what do you think? I, I don't know if you have your crystal ball handy or not, but what are your thoughts on that from like a big picture wise? So I, I think High Republic is a long-term hold. Um, if, if you look at the history of Star Wars and Star Wars comics, um, the, the issues that are monsters right now didn't become monsters overnight. Like um, Clone Wars number one, it came out in 2008. Uh, it, it's just now over the past year or so become the monster that it was. And it took almost a decade for it to climb to $300. And it's only taken a year after that to get to a thousand now. Um, 
stuff like Heir to the Empire just started shooting up because of The Mandalorian. Um, Boba Fett stuff was up there, but it's gone so much higher because of The Mandalorian and all this kind of stuff. So Star Wars comics are generally a hold, especially with the High Republic, because we know from Disney and Lucasfilm that this initiative they're doing is multi-phase, multi-year. So it's going to take years in phases for them to build the stories out, to build the era out, and to build the characters out. And we know that um, a lot of what drives this, these Star Wars prices up in these keys are the love and popularity of these characters like Ahsoka and Thrawn and Boba Fett. Um, and for that love to develop, there's got to be more backstory, more importance, and it's going to take time for the character to go through all of those things. So love takes time. I, I, I get that, my friend. <laughs> um, and as always, we talk about covers. Um, uh, you know, they're producing a decent amount of these High Republic covers. I know for number one, there was a ton of different covers. Number two... There's definitely some 1 in 25 variants out there that I've seen, or at least one 1 in 25 variants, and then there's some online exclusives for this one. Which ones do you think uh, our listeners should be sort of really tuned in on? Um, the 1 in 25, definitely. That's a Ashley Witter cover. Um, she's one of my personal favorite artists, going back to when she was doing the main covers for the first Dr. Afra run. Um, I love her artwork, and that cover is amazing. It was one of the hottest ones pre-selling on eBay for almost reaching a hundred dollars. It's cooled off a little bit now that it's been released um, because I think people didn't know how many of the one in 25s are going to be out there. And then since it was such a heavily ordered book, more of them were out there than people anticipated. So it's cooled off a little bit, but it's still a beautiful cover. Um, still going for over about double ratio. So it's a one in 25. So it's going for over $50. Um, some of the exclusive covers, are always ones that you can go and grab. Um, very rarely have in Star Wars do they seem to like decrease in value, especially with the High Republic that we've seen. Um, so they'll hold or go up a little bit because um, we know they're limited. The the A cover, I do expect it to rise eventually. It's not really rising much right now because like I said, there's a ton of them out there, but I do expect it to rise eventually. If you can find one, go grab yourself at least one of those and stick it in a box somewhere. You can't go wrong for four bucks. Awesome. Was there anything else you wanted to share on this one? Do you want to start talking about our second comic this week? I'm ready to move on to the second one because the second one is the second one's the big one. All right. High Republic Adventures number one. Let's have at it. Let me hear what you got to say about it. All right. So this is a crazy one. This has... 10 character first appearances, not including planets and events. Um, if we're just going to go over them all, it's got the first comic appearance of the Great Hyperspace Disaster. It's what starts out the High Republic era in the short stories and in the novels and is what basically made the High Republic era into what it is right now. We have the first appearance of Lula Talasola, a Jedi Padawan. She is the main character, one of the two main characters we're seeing in High Republic Adventures right now. We have the first appearance of the planet, um, Treatment 4. We have the first appearance of Lula's friends, Jedi Padawan's court, and Farzala. We have the first appearance of Zine Marala, who is a local to Treatment 4. He's the other main character. And then we have the first appearance of Zine's friend, Crix. Now, we also have the first appearance of the Elders of the Path. Um, that's a heavy spec alert coming up a little bit later, but that's a big one. So we also have the first appearance of Jedi Master Torben Buck, also known as Buckets of Blood. I love that name. We have the co-first appearance of the Nihil. I would even argue that this is the general first appearance of the Nihil because it is way more important in this issue than it was in High Republic number two. In this issue, we have an invasion force with over 15 Nihil being seen, not one warrior on a ship from High Republic number two. The other cool thing in this issue is in the middle of it, there is a galaxy map that they printed that shows us where these new planets and systems are from everything that's been happening compared to the systems we know, like Coruscant and Tatooine. 
We also have the first appearance of Bibbs. He's another Jedi Padawan. We have the first appearance of Elder Tromac. He's a local to the planet. Um, he is part of this uh, Elders of the Path group we'll talk about in a little bit. And the other key issue is it's said that the Nihil are trying to capture Elder Tromac under orders from, quote unquote, him. Um, we have the first appearance of the main Nihil commander, Marcion Rowe. And we see him command his warriors to kill the Jedi Padawans. Whew, lots of stuff in that one. So basically, this is an issue people may want to buy in bulk. Because so uh, it seems like uh, there's a ton of first appearances in it. Uh, so it's clearly a very key issue. Um, and if the series is to sort of take off and do well, um, this will be obviously the issue people are going to want to have. Uh, absolutely. Um, and I, I think some people were passing up on this because it's branded as a quote unquote kids novel. But having read it, I will say Lucasfilm and Disney did not pull any punches from this just because it's a kids novel. It goes deep into it and it goes deep into it quickly, just like the main series. Now, from a resale perspective, I, can, I mean, obviously, this kind of is in the same vein as High Republic number two, where if people are looking at buying this, it's one of those you put in a box and forget about it, right? Because this obviously just started rolling out. There might be a variant cover. I believe there is a one in 10 and maybe a one in 25. Uh, variant cover out there that might have immediate value but I would imagine like for the resellers that are listening this is just one that you put aside and forget that you have um, for a while would you agree yes and here's why um, there, there is a there's there's only the a cover and the one in ten um, there's still the possibility out there I think that IDW will let places do exclusives for this um, rumors are that they're not letting that happen right now but i think in the future they will uh, i i think it's just too big of a series to not have exclusives for so i think they will be coming at some point so i think those will be ones to look out for but here's here's the reason why this is such an important one past all of those first appearances we had the first appearance of the elders of the past and here's what that group is the, the definition of that group from wikipedia um, divided into multiple communes, members are either elders or acolytes within the group. Elders preached that the force is like a fire and it should not be sensed by any living being. Relationships between elders and acolytes are considered far more important than those between parents and children. The force-sensitive Zine Morala and her parents were members of the group, as was Morala's best friend, Crix. Here's where the heavy spec alert comes in. We know from Disney that there is a Disney Plus series coming called The Acolyte, and it is going to take place at the end of the High Republic era. Is there a possible connection between this Elders of the Path group, who is so against the Force, and their Elders and Acolytes? Is it about them? No idea. We don't know. We don't have any information about that. But for a book that's still out there for cover price, who could have such a big influence with that show coming, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't pick that up with this possible spec. Do you have any idea of what the print runs were on this one? Or, um, you know, they're pretty readily available still. Uh, I, I don't know what the print runs on this were. I do know that it, it was very heavily ordered. Um, mainly because of the one in 10. The one in 10 was going for about 25 to $30 and sometimes upwards of that. So people were ordering for the one in 10. So, and like I said, I, I think people were passing up on this book originally who didn't know anything about it because it was labeled as a kid's book. And as information has started to come out a little bit and as we're sharing this now, hopefully people will realize that this is important. And in my opinion, this so far is the most important High Republic comic that has been released yet. Great. Was there any other content or information you want to share about these, uh, this issue in particular? Um, no, nothing, nothing regarding any of these so far. I will tell you that, um, like I said before, 
we do have the first appearance in this High Republic Adventures of the Nihil leader, Marcion Rowe. He's at the very end. We see him. I will say the cover for High Republic Adventures number three, the A cover, does have Marcion Rowe on him, on it. And I, I have not seen people pointing that out yet so far, as far as Key Collector goes or in the spec world out there. And uh, th that does look to be the first cover appearance so far of him, unless we get a some kind of exclusive that would come out before then. All right, well, there you have it, everybody. This week's picks are High Republic number two, as well as High Republic Adventures number one. For those of you that are looking for some solid holds and investments, uh, definitely pick them up. And I think that they're, as uh, Aaron was sharing, there's a solid future with the two of them. Just got to be patient and let the characters evolve and uh, the storyline to develop. As always, we appreciate your support. Please click on the subscribe button on the bottom. Uh, please follow us um, on our Facebook page, Department of Comics, on Twitter, Department of Comics, or on Instagram, and uh, most importantly, on our Discord server. Um, thank you again so much for listening, and we'll have more content for you soon.